Yo, what is up, Suja Nation? Welcome back to another video. This is the top 10 albums of 2020. I've been wanting to do a video like this since 2018, but I really never got to it in 2018 or 2019. And I asked you guys on Instagram, would you like me to make this video? And a lot of you guys said yes. So here it is. The top 10 albums of 2020 in Suja's opinion. And by the way, just keep in mind, this is my opinion on what the best albums of 2020 are. I don't care if you disagree. In fact, tell me what your best albums are in the comments. I really would like to know what you guys consider your best albums. Because my best albums and your best albums may differ, may be similar. But I'm just here to share mine and that's about it. And with that being said, let's start the video. And oh my god. I've done so many takes of this, so you guys better like this because this is like probably the 10th take of this video. But with that being said, let's get in to the top 10 albums of 2020. Alright, so for number 10, we have the deluxe version of Eternal A Take by Lil Uzi Vert. So in March, Lil Uzi Vert finally made his highly anticipated second studio album, Eternal A Take, and I'll be honest, the initial Eternal A Take album was quite a letdown, other than a few songs like Part 2, which is the sequel to the wonderful EXO Tour Life and Celebrity Station. But one week later, Lil Uzi Vert redeemed himself by making a good album in the deluxe version by adding Lil Uzi Vert vs. The World 2, Overall, making this album good with songs like Come This Way and Leaders featuring Nav. And honestly, there's nothing very good or extremely impressive about this album. But the album has made the list because it's good and it's worth a listen. So if you would like, check it out. Number 9, we have I'll Say It For You by Dax. This one is... A very good album compared to Eternal A Take Deluxe. Very good. You may not know who Dax is. He's a YouTube rapper who is generally known for his incredible lyrical ability and flow. He freestyles real good. Like you have to check out his kill shot freestyle and he's freestyled on quite a few other songs. Dax is very good. And honestly, in I'll Say It For You, we really see Dax shows his incredible ability, and I've actually been listening to Dax since 2017, I would say, when he made the Jake Paul diss track, that's when I first started listening to him, but Dax has an incredible ability, something that you could compare to Joyner Lucas or J. Cole, and his poetry is also very good, so if you want good poetry in an album, you have to check out Dax. Dax does a very good job of that, and other than that, Dax is just a very good storyteller, has a very good flow, has a good instrumental choice on the album, and overall, I'll say it for you, is a very good album. I really can't say much more about it. Go experience it if you want to know more about it. And honestly, if there's one thing Dax lacks in, he doesn't know how to make a hook, but if you're okay with not every song having a super catchy hook to it, then go give Dax a listen. Please give him a listen. He's very good. Number eight, we have Good Intentions by Nav. So Nav is an artist that a lot of people either love or hate. Like everybody either loves him or hates him. And honestly, I feel like I like him. I like his nice, soft, melodic style. To his music and honestly some of you like it some of you don't a lot of you like it because he's doing very good and overall in good intentions nav continues to stay with his basic melodic sort of hum style but nav kind of takes it to another level as he gets a little innovative by playing around with different flows on his album Good Intentions and other than that 
Nav is very good when it comes to choices of instrumentals, and he's even produced some of them himself as he used to be a producer. So when it comes to beats, Nav will never let you down. And honestly, his variety of flows on his album, Good Intentions, is what really makes it better than the other stuff he's made. And I'll be honest, I'll be honest Bad Habits and Good Intentions are... Maybe not the best Nav albums in the sense, you know, there are obviously the classics like Call Me and there's the whole Nav mixtape. But Nav has really evolved when you listen to those two albums. He's come a long way and honestly, I feel like what we need Nav to do in his next album, his third studio album, Nav, please get your Indian roots into an album. Go get a Bollywood artist, anyone, any Indian artist. There's so many talented artists in India. You're Punjabi. Get a Punjabi artist and show him, have him collab with you on your album. Like, if you don't know about Nav, his uncle was a famous singer in India. And honestly, Nav, just get your uncle on your album. Like, imagine how good that would sound. Please, Nav, just do it. But other than that, check out Good Intentions if you like Nav. And also if you like maybe Drake or The Weeknd, also do check out Good Intentions because you will also enjoy this album quite a bit as Nav has kind of evolved his flow and been able to, you know, go with different flows while also keeping up with the same old Nav. So, yeah, that's all I got to say about Nav's album. Other than that, just go and experience it yourself. And number seven, we have Music to be Murdered by, by Eminem. Eminem this year has really surprised us with his musical ability. Eminem is one man who has stayed relevant for 10 years. And I'll be honest, a lot of you may not like his album Revival, which came out in 2017, but... I'm one of the people who actually listened to Revival and really liked it. And then Eminem made Kamikaze in 2018, a total surprise album. And trust me, Eminem's album Kamikaze was a true Kamikaze attack on the industry. We never saw it coming. Eminem really proved that he still, when he's I think in his 40s if I'm not mistaken, or at least late 30s, is able to make incredible music. He still is able to keep up with his amazing ability. And Music To Be Murdered By keeps up with him showing that he can still stay relevant when he dropped his debut album in 1999. Eminem made a song called Godzilla with Juice World. That's one song you have to check out. It's probably one of the best songs that came out this year. And honestly, it's just... Eminem still has that incredible talent and working with Don Tolliver and Juice World on his album Music To Be Murdered By just shows that he's able to keep up with his old flow while also being able to kind of follow new trends. And honestly, Music To Be Murdered By shows that Eminem has a bright future. I can guarantee Eminem five years in the game and he's still going to be making fire music. Eminem, you're a legend. A lot of us can't do it, I'll be honest. I can't be as good as you. But Eminem, you're a legend. And number six, we have Terminal by Gone or Luke Gone. A lot of you may not know who he is, but he's a YouTube artist who has appeared in Crypt, YouTube rapper Cypher, as well as collabing with Crypt quite a bit. And he even made a song with Lil Xan recently, which is very good. Everything Gone makes is very good. Gone kind of seems like a new Eminem rising up on the scene, except he's a bit of a geek in the sense he likes Rick and Morty. He plays video games. You can make that out from his style of music and his beat choice also kind of goes that way. But honestly, Gone is very good. He's very underrated. He has only 200,000 monthly listeners on Spotify. Like, seriously, Luke Gone deserves 10 million listeners on Spotify. And 
I just randomly found his music when I was scrolling through Spotify with his song Thanos and that incredible flow on that song changed it. And I listened to his whole album Terminal, which Thanos is one of the songs on it. And God can't let you down. He's a very good artist, very talented. He has a very bright future. And I don't know. I just hope Gon goes places with what he has done. And he keeps up with this amazing sound. And, you know, I've actually DM'd Gon. And he responded, thank you. Um, your songs are very good. Number five. We have Heaven or Hell by Don Tolliver. I really can't say that much about this. It's just... Don Tolliver was kind of an industry plant planted by Travis Scott on Can't Say, and Don Tolliver has kept up with his sound on Can't Say and how good he did on Can't Say, and making his album Heaven or Hell, instrumental choice, very good, still keeps the normal Don Tolliver sound, and overall, Heaven or Hell by Don Tolliver is just a good album, and it's worth a listen, just check it out. I remember listening to it a lot during the first week of quarantine and honestly it's just a nice thing to bop to. So Don Tolliver, good album. Let's get to number four. And number four, we have The Weeknd with After Hours. So Blinding Lights is one of the hit songs of this year, as we all know. Another song I used to I listened to a lot during the first week of quarantine in March and honestly the weekend has an incredible ability it's not as good as Starboy or call out my name and all the weekend's old stuff but the weekend is a good artist very talented and he shows his talent on after hours a very good album you know the weekend is known for his high-pitched voice and that's kind of what makes a lot of the songs by The Weeknd sound like The Weeknd and overall it's just a nice thing to listen to. So after hours you have the number four spot. Number three. These three albums number three, number two, and number one are probably the best albums. Well they are my top three but they're really the spotlight of the albums that have come out this year. So let's get started. Drum roll for number three. Kid Cudi, Man on the Moon 3. So this album was almost not making it into the list because I was actually making the list or the script for this video while I was listening. This album came out, but Kid Cudi, you made a very good album. It's just Kid Cudi's sci-fi feel to his album with his incredible storytelling ability. Like, if you like Rodeo or Astro World or Birds in the Trap by Travis Scott, then you're going to like Kid Cudi's album for sure. It has a much more sci-fi feel to it, like Man on the Moon is the name of it, so it's obviously going to have a slight sci-fi sound to it. And honestly, it's just a very well done album. Like, Kid Cudi has put a lot of work into it. Like the instrumentals are so complex, but at the same time sound so simple that it just blows my mind away with how good his instrumentals are. His flow has a lot of variety. His flow just sounds good generally throughout the whole album. This is like one album that I'll listen to the first time and this barely happened. There are only a few albums which have done this. I listened to it the first time and I was incredibly impressed with what Kid Cudi was able to do. Kid Cudi, congratulations. You have earned Suja's third place for best albums of 2020. Number two. <laughs> Fuck Love by The Kid Leroy. The Kid Leroy kind of had his big breakthrough this year with Addison Rae, his single, and he blew up, you know? 
And after that, he made an album, and his album is very good. A lot of the songs sound good, like I was just biking, and I just randomly was playing his album, and it was just so good. His song, the song Maybe, is a very good song, you must listen to it, and the thing about the Kid Leroy is the guitar beats on his album are very good. He kind of has a very nice sound, like personally I would say it's better than Juice World. The Kid Leroy really has a lot of talent for somebody younger than me. Like, only slightly younger than me, but he is younger than me. And the Kid Leroy is going places. When you listen to his music, it's not super auto-tuned to the point at which you don't even hear his voice. He actually has a nice voice when you listen to his stuff. And he just has so much talent and his ability to deliver like, you have to listen to Maybe, you have to listen to all the other songs he's made. The music videos, whoever directed every music video, I know Logan Paul directed one of them. All the music videos are also very good for the Kid Leroy's music. And honestly, the Kid Leroy has a bright future ahead. I've said this so many times that you're probably blowing your mind away. Blowing your mind up because you can't take this anymore. And... The Kid Leroy made a very good album. I really can't say a lot more about it. As you can see, as I get to better albums, I say less about it. Mostly because you have to go and experience the album yourself. Listen to it. Only when you listen to it will you actually know what I'm actually saying about it. And then we have a controversial number one. KSI with Dissimulation. So, I made a whole video reviewing the simulation, like, song by song. The simulation really has so many good songs. Basically, every song in the album, including the deluxe version, is good. And a lot of you may disagree with me on this, and I don't care if you disagree, but I think KSI did a, made a very good album. And part of it is because KSI is somebody I've been listening to since 2016, or the end of it, and basically the start of 2017, I started getting into KSI. And KSI has come a long way. His song Lamborghini was pretty good, but you know, basic YouTube stuff. But KSI has really been on the UK scene for a while. In fact, there's a whole video talking about how KSI has been on the music scene. He's worked with a lot of artists in the UK, and then he made his debut album, which I was expecting earlier, after his EPs. In 2019, New Age with Randolph. Very good album, even though I wouldn't say it's as good as Dissimulation. Because Dissimulation shows KSI has really reached an amazing standpoint when it comes to music. Like, KSI talks about how he has really made it, and KSI really has made it. KSI has been in the game for four years. It's just he really has not had that much recognition in the United States and collaborated with that many US artists. He has been a YouTuber and has been playing FIFA for a while. He was one of the first people to hit 10 mil million and uh, subscribers on YouTube. And then he started the YouTube music, you know? He used to make FIFA songs. And then from that, he went to making Lamborghini. And then he made his EPs such as Keep Up, very good songs. And he's worked with a lot of good UK artists. And to prove the fact that he is good, none of the UK artists ever charged him to feature. They featured because they liked his work. And then KSI made New Age. New Age was very good. And then, after K right before KSI was going to fight in the rematch, he makes Down Like That, which is a straight up banger with Rick Ross and Lil Baby and SX. I'll be honest. Rick Ross has the best verse on it because, you know, Rick Ross is a legend. How can you even keep up with Rick Ross? But KSI makes good music. Like, the song Down Like That was a song that Lil Baby and Rick Ross hopped on without pay getting paid a single dollar from KSI. Like, Jake Paul has paid a Gucci Mane so much for the It's Every Day Bro remix. KSI didn't pay a penny, and he got Rick Ross and Lil Baby featured on Down Like That, and Down Like That is a good song, Poppin' is a very good song, a lot of KSI's own songs are very good, like, 
One thing that KSI did on the simulation that I really didn't like is he used auto-tune a lot because that is not KSI's classic sound. You have to hear Creature transforming all his old stuff like Space EP is very good. And KSI has really come a long way from being bored of your career and tired of people saying all you care about is the money and the fame to taking a break to coming back with Space EP, even though it's a failure, even though I thought it was very good and I still listen to it quite a bit. But KSI failed on Space EP. Then he made, got into the diss track season and started making diss tracks. And his diss tracks did good. He kind of got himself a little bit back on track. And then he started working with the Sidemen. The Sidemen grew a lot and KSI grew a lot. He started becoming a boxer, you know, fighting Joe Weller and then Logan Paul, and then having the rematch. And on top of this, he's allowed his music to evolve. And this simulation truly shows that KSI is very good when it comes to how good he's performed in the UK scene. In fact, Trippy Red and Lil Baby charted for the first time in the UK when collabing with KSI. And honestly, the simulation is just such a good album. You have so many good songs you know you have down like that as i spoke about it a lot you have cap i have a whole video talking all about this so you could just go and check that out because i'm boring you a lot talking all about how good the simulation is by ksi but really ksi has now proven himself a worthy mainstream musician he's no longer just a youtube artist like everybody else ksi is a mainstream musician like He's worked with a ton of good mainstream artists in the United States. He's worked with ones in the UK for four years. Okay, that was three. Four years he's worked with good ones in the UK. And now he's worked with good ones in the United States. And he hasn't charged them even a penny for featuring on his album. And he's brought to us a very good album. KSI has a bright future when it comes to music. And that's all I have to say really about KSI. Check out my other video about dissimulation. And with that being said, it's the end of this video. And uh, it's my first time doing a top 10 albums of the year list. I'm kind of going to try to make better album reviews because I feel like that's something I have not really digged my feet in, in my hands that deep in. But I should be digging my hands deeper in because I don't know. I guess they do pretty well on the channel. And with that being said, it's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do smash a thumbs up, subscribe, check out all my social media, check out my Instagram because that's where I'm going to put up a lot of these polls. And yeah, it's the end of the video. Goodbye.